So guests who travel to Portland afterwards, they rate their trips very, very highly in Portland. Mm -hmm. Hello, hosts and travelers. Welcome to the podcast, Hosting Your Home. Each week around the world, millions of guests stay in other people's homes using the Airbnb platform. Debbie Herder looks for stories that come from these connections. Listen in as we hear stories that teach us the human side of hosting your home. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hosting Your Home. I want to start this episode today by, with an apology and tell you we just got a little off our schedule this last month. We had the most amazing month of visitors. Our four grandchildren were here from ages six to two, and they brought their corresponding parents. And we had so many activities and things going on in this house. We also have our daughter who lives here in Portland. So our numbers increased greatly, and it was pretty amazing to be able to keep up with any kind of a schedule. So anyway, we're, we're getting back in our groove now, and, um, and our last guest just left a couple of days ago, and this was some friends that we grew up with, basically, who brought their children and their grandchildren. So, <laughs> so we're getting into fall now and um, getting back into our own schedule. So about Taylor Shefstrom and today's episode, I met Taylor soon after she started with the Airbnb Portland office. She is personable and friendly, easily approachable, and she just does a fantastic job in her outreach to our local hosts. Portland is almost unique in that hosts in the area have access to a very large Airbnb office. We get to go there and discuss things and just connect and see how Airbnb works and um, I've had a number of tours and a number of lunches there, and by and large, these people are just really amazing and really dedicated to their jobs. And Taylor is our main contact person for the local hosts, and she works really hard to make sure that we feel like we've got a connection to the company. So I asked her if she would do this inter interview with me, and she invited me in, and we just had a nice little chat. So join me. I hope you enjoy this. I know that we have the highest percentage super hosts, and I know that we have um, the highest, I mean, I can see sort of a dashboard of data, and I know that we have the highest, um, you'd call it like guest satisfaction. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So guests who travel to Portland afterwards, they rate their trips very, very highly in Portland mm -hmm. compared to other markets. Mm -hmm. How do I say your last name? Chefstrom? Chefstrom, yeah. Okay. okay. Swedish. Soon to be changing, though, probably. I, yeah, it's so exciting. So yeah. welcome, Taylor Chefstrom of Airbnb. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Debbie. Appreciate it. So, Taylor, let's just talk a little bit about you and where you're from and how you got into Airbnb and what you're doing here. Sure. So I am actually from Oregon. I'm from Southern Oregon, oh. a tiny town called Rogue River, which is near Ashland for anybody who knows Ashland. Beautiful well. place, too. Very pretty, very tiny. Um, so I went to a tiny high school of about 400 people. I was very much a, a sports girl, played a ton of sports, rode horses, and was really excited about travel even then. Um, in high school, I went to Italy with a, with a school group and loved it. Um, my mom and I would travel all over um, as well for sports sports events or even just like riding our horses. Um, and so I ended up going to college in Eugene at the University of Oregon. Um, and there I studied photography and photo photojournalism oh. and also political science um, just because I had a lot of interest in other countries. So I, I had a lot of fun studying there and throughout college I went on numerous sort of harebrained adventures um really with friends yeah we would we were we're not so good at the planning but we really wanted to travel so uh -huh. one summer a friend and I just uh took off for an entire month and lived the month in um England and we had a whole plan there's a hike in England called the walk across England and it goes from 
west to east, I could have that backwards. But it's kind of this just hike across the entirety of England. We're like, that sounds awesome. And, and we went. That. Well, we went, and it was summertime, and it was the summer of like 2006, maybe, or seven. Anyways, England was having horrible flooding that summer. So it was raining constantly. Um, and we had no money. So instead of buying the uh, correct maps that you're supposed to buy that show, like, the trails in detail, we went to, like, the tourist station and bought the cheapest possible maps showing, like, the cartoon version of the hike and <laughs> proceeded to get so lost oh, day no. after day after day. Got rained on. All of our equipment camera got destroyed by rain. And um, so we, we basically made it about halfway across England. Anyways, what that is all to say anyway. <laughs> that um, I always had a huge passion for travel. So after college and after living in Turkey, actually, for three months, <gasps> came back to Portland and worked as a freelance photographer for a few years, for a while, doing uh, mostly food and drink stuff um, for Portland. Um, had a really great time with that. But got really excited when a friend of mine started working at Airbnb and mentioned that I should apply. So that's kind of how I got started. And that was the San Francisco Airbnb or were they moving to Portland? That was in Portland. It was just okay. in Portland um, very soon after they had kind of officially opened the office, which was in 2014, mm-hmm. early 2014. And so I started working here in um, September of 2014. So, and are you still in the same capacity or have you moved, changed jobs as you've... I started in Portland, right, as the office was really building out um, its customer support teams, Mm -hmm. essentially. Um, It was right as Airbnb was, I mean, we're still growing enormously, but it was kind of right as the company was really, really taking off sort of um, steeply. So I got hired um, for our trip experience team. So as a host, if you've ever called in um, when you have a guest who is currently staying with you. So if a trip is ongoing, if you call in, then you would speak with one of us. Um, And so that's what I was originally hired for. For any reason that you would call in? Like, is that, Pretty is that, much. So the, you, when you call Airbnb, it mm-hmm. will ask you if you're calling about a reservation in progress or a future reservation or something else. Mm-hmm. So if we chose the reservation in progress, mm-hmm. would that be the person that we would yes, then be exactly. funneled to? Okay. Yes, exactly. It would be funneled to um, somebody here. Um, Portland, of course, there's offices all over the world, mm-hmm. so depending on time zone. And then we would be available to help you, you know, with that sort of emergent issue that's Mm -hmm. happening right then. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started working here. And now at this point, I have moved sort of towards doing more community work for Portland, simply because I sort of saw a need there. You know, when I when I started working here in 2014, you know, we all sort of knew that there were, of course, there were hosts in Portland and seemed to be going well, seemed to be be pretty popular. Um, But as an office, we we never really welcomed hosts into the space, right. there, there didn't really seem to be a lot of uh, official outreach sort of from, right. from the office, mm-hmm. given our size and everything, which was kind of strange. So I had sort of just collaborated with some colleagues to kind of ideate on ways that we could interact more with all of the hosts that live here in Portland. Um, and so that's when a friend and I here came up with our first family dinner that we had Back in, I think it was probably October of, probably almost a year ago, October of 2015 was when we had our first big sort of host dinner. I think you were there. I don't think so. I think oh. we missed the first the first one. Okay. And um, I'm trying to remember when I first met you, but I thought it was, I thought it was more than a year ago. It feels yeah. like it's been a couple of years, but... Man, it's hard. It I is hard to remember. It is, yes. I... You know, yeah, it's hard to remember, but October 2015 Mm -hmm. um, is is really when we kind of started pushing hard on having more community events for Portland, really reaching out to the folks here Mm -hmm. and trying to give back and bring them into what we're doing, just because the community here in Portland is so vibrant and engaged. And I'm thinking the first Airbnb open was Mm -hmm. 2014, wasn't it? 
So yep. 2014 is the year that we started the meetup group. Mm. So the mm-hmm. meetup group had actually been meeting on a monthly basis for almost a year before you, before we found you. That we that found must each other. that must be true. So the the 2014 open would have been in November November yes. of 24. I yes. did not attend that open because I had only just started at the company. But that's really interesting. So you guys were already meeting. And that's Monthly. why we started, the Rob and I started the meetup on our way down to San Francisco mm-hmm. because I wanted to connect with other Portland hosts mm. and get together, and I couldn't do that on the platform. Right. So I thought, rats, I'll just start a way to do it yeah. <laughs> to get to know other people. So it's You know what? It's it's just a very much an evolving work in progress. Yes. It's, it's been hard, but I, I do feel like, now, looking back on that, looking back on even a year ago, we really have progressed. Oh, it's amazing. Then. It is really amazing. I think mm-hmm. that the Portland uh, host community was really, really hungry to get to know more Airbnb people, to know how to interface with them, to know how to do their jobs better, mm-hmm. and probably for recognition, too. And I think you've just done an incredible job. Well, it's that's It's been fantastic. really fun watching that, this whole thing, like, evolve into mm-hmm. something that I think that that the people that I know – that are hosts here mm-hmm. are feeling very confident in what they're doing, mm-hmm. and they feel like they've got someone to go to to talk to. I mean, they're, and they're feeling supported, and that's huge. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's yeah. fantastic to hear because yeah. that was kind of the idea. You're like, man, yeah. really need to like get to know these folks. So, are you are are you an Airbnb guest? Have you stayed as a guest at Airbnbs? Mm. I I love staying on Airbnb. Yeah. It's my favorite. Um, I've stayed all over the world. So I've stayed in Paris. I stayed in Iceland for a long time mm. with my fiance. We took a trip there oh. and stayed in a bunch of different Airbnbs all over Iceland. And they were all just incredible. Stayed in San Francisco, obviously, quite a bit. All over Oregon. Um, stayed in Allen and Dabney's Lookout, yes. which is always an incredible experience. Stayed in a fire lookout in Bend. We've been all oh, over with it. We've been up in Washington, um, in British Alaska, Columbia, Alaska. Okay. We stayed in Alaska. Yep, up in Palmer, Alaska. Adorable little B and B run by just an older man. Incredible. Yeah. Made just lived there by himself, uh-huh. but had had oh. uh, these different little spots of his house that he had set up for guests. Did a full breakfast every day. Whoa. Just. He just loved it. Um, And it must be very rewarding for you in your job position to see how well other people are doing and and to witness how nicely this is working around the world. It really it really is. And we you know, when we travel on Airbnb, um, we I I don't really like I I don't message and say that I'm an Airbnb employee. Mm -hmm. But once we're there for hanging out and if it kind of comes up. Um, I'll mention that I do work at Airbnb, and um, people are always pretty delighted. They're like, oh, we've been having such an incredible time with this. We, you know, stopped work, stopped working as much at our old job, or this really has helped us invest in any, like, other parts of our home. Mm-hmm. So they, I feel like people always have really, really inspiring stories about how much they're enjoying the That's service. That's very cool. Which is really cool. And you're hear. starting to bring those to light, too, with your story hours that you're hosting here at the headquarters. Yeah, it's that was nice kind of the, the idea with that. Was mm-hmm. um, Is that where you got excited. the idea? You know, I think it was at some of the dinners. Um, just in chatting with people, they had uh, just mentioned having good stories. Or they'd started telling a really fun story about hosting. Mm-hmm. And we thought it'd be really fun to gather those together and kind of hear them out for people. Mm-hmm. I'm also a really big fan of The Moth, which is a live storytelling mm-hmm. event and podcast. PR, right? Yeah, and on NPR. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but there's one that happens here in Portland, and it's so, so fun. Um, and so we kind of thought, oh, I wonder if we could just kind of have one of those like, like for Airbnb hosts yeah. in Portland. Um, so that was kind of the idea for that. Uh, cool. But yeah, I feel like it doesn't matter like where you are in in over the world mm-hmm. people are they're just excited to be doing it and um you know i think for a lot of the employees here in portland maybe things are a little stressful because we do end up hearing about some more of the negative stories 
But when you go out and just use Airbnb, I think overwhelmingly it is just yeah. people really enjoying it. And it's it's sort of one-offs are really poor experiences. So but. why don't you tell hosts that you are an Airbnb employee when you book with them? You know, I I don't because I feel like it's it would be weird. I don't know. I'm torn. Uh, maybe it's the sort of thing where I should I should pull some mm-hmm. hosts and see what they think. But I always felt like it seemed weird, like I was trying to leverage something. So, yeah, or but something like that. It's such a flattering thing. I mean, that's my personal mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. I love having you guys stay in mm-hmm. my places. I yeah. always have, and I've always really enjoyed knowing more Airbnb employees. No, oh, yeah. I mean, it's very cool. It's like knowing a whole bunch of different hosts. Everybody's different, and everyone right. does a different thing yeah. you know, within the firm, too. Right. It's true. So. I mean, that's a good point. I could bring it up. I, I just I, I try to bring it up once I'm there. Mm-hmm. I just don't want them to feel strange about it, and so, I also don't, don't want them to maybe decline me if they don't. Oh. Oh, one in a bl- I don't know. Oh, I can't you know imagine I mean? that that would happen. Just I don't know. Because if we use the platform, then we're we're lining ourselves up with Airbnb in a That's loyalty true. kind of a way. I'm so. always worried that people think I'm going to like be secret shopping or something. Oh, really? Yeah, but oh, I interesting. even though we're not, like it's not even a thing. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we love traveling on Airbnb. Good, mm-hmm. good. So, exactly, what is it that you do? What is your title and and what do you do with Airbnb? Right. So right now, my title right now and what I'm focusing on primarily is um, community work. So for Portland, I'm just the community point of contact for the market. So I'm working on community building events. I'm helping Dave uh, some with his mobilization efforts. Um, we try to really work together on those two sides of the coin. I'm planning larger events, the dinners, and at the end of September, an awards party for the local market. I'm also trying to bring hosts in, and the community, and guests to, um, in on our community service efforts. So we have a whole department um, at the company really focused on getting employees involved in citizenship. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, every month folks are encouraged to join a different citizenship effort. Um, and we really are trying to kind of leverage the the host community on that mm-hmm. stuff as well. Mm-hmm. It's harder; people are busy, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but kind yeah, of working volunteering to push on that. is a little difficult. It's but hard. There are a lot of really worthwhile places here to mm-hmm. volunteer as well. So. It's very true. Yeah. So kind of just coming up with ideas of how to how to get people more mm-hmm. involved with that sort of stuff, and then another part of what I've been trying to work on lately is. Getting Portland hosts more interfaced with um, local small businesses. So mm. we really want to support local commerce, you know, and show that Airbnb does support local commerce. And so I've been sort of thinking of ways to show hosts behind the scenes things at local businesses, um, you know, having some yoga classes giving them spots where they can send their guests, getting some, like, reciprocation going. Mm -hmm. Lately, one one example has just been our our events with Nike Bike Town. You know, people are excited about bike sharing now that it's finally in Portland. Yes. And it's a fantastic service for Airbnb guests. Yes. It, you know, as a host, you don't have to have, you don't have to own the bikes or anything. It's easy. Um, so we've really collaborated with them. No insurance issues, no which insurance. is a big deal, too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So we've really collaborated with them. They've been awesome. They're excited about Airbnb guests and hosts using the service. So we've been having really cool, like, local localized um, community bike rides mm-hmm. where they get to use the bike for free. Um, somebody from Bike Town explains the whole service, shows them how to use it. They get a map of all of the different hubs that are available that they can put in their listing. It's been a cool collaboration. Oh, that's so wonderful. Kind of stuff like that is what I've been really excited about. And then more and more, I'm going to start trying to um, give information about the open, encourage people to ask questions about registering, kind of encourage encourage that effort. Do you have a lot of latitude within the company that you can create your own job description and, you know, the whole flow of events? Um, 
That's a good question. What I will say is if you have an idea that you're really excited about, you know, say back in October, I was just like really, really excited to do this dinner with hosts from Portland. Very supportive. Like if you, that is one cool thing about, about being here. Um, you know, you could have one role, but if you really are going to put in the extra effort and you have this harebrained idea that you want to bring to fruition, you just push on it and you can make it happen for sure. Cool. So that is what is really cool. Um, and I still work uh, part-time on trip experience work and help that team as much as I can and sort of share responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And that has been really cool. So if you, if, if you have kind of a dream or a goal of what you want to do in the company, it's 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 the sort of place where you can make that happen if you push on it. You know? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Do you want to, can you tell us what it's like working here? I mean, you know, it seems, first of all, we're in the Airbnb Portland headquarters mm-hmm. doing this interview, which is a phenomenal building. Mm -hmm. in downtown Portland, and we're in, did you say this is the ship room? This is the ship room. Um, And so the cool thing about the Portland office is it was all employee designed, and um, a lot of hard work and just overtime hours honestly went into the design and the implementation. So the ship room was just a concept that some employees came up with. They thought it would be really fun to have one of the meeting rooms look like a ship. Um, it's, it's very cool. So they sourced the materials. They, uh-huh. ke- you know, did all the drawings, came up with the design. Hung the create, rope. Hung the rope, everything <laughs> like that. And um, came in one night, you know, because we all kind of had to uh, move in, set up everything kind of overnight once the building was finished. Uh-huh. Um, came in overnight and just constructed all of it. So that's that was a that's really cool, cool part. May I take a picture before I leave? Is yeah. That, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. So it is a very sort of fun-loving environment, Uh I guess is what I would call Uh it. Um, You've been here before, and and you know that the sort of the office plan is very open. Um, It's sort of sit anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, There are sort of teams, clusters of teams, but if you come in in the morning and you just want to be on a completely different floor or a completely different environment or just lounge on on a couch and work there, you totally can. So that is one really fun. Do you really clock fun. in when you come in or sign in when on your... Um, so that there's... The, there's no clock in. I mean, of course, um, people do have schedules, so you would just mm-hmm. come in for your schedule. Mm-hmm. There's some earlier shifts. There's some later shifts. So the mm-hmm. office is generally open from about 7 to 10. Um, so people are kind of cycling mm-hmm. in and out during that time. But it's, it's pretty relaxed. Yeah, it um, is. It's pretty... And I love the little... The little, what do you call them? The little kiosk kind of places that you that are scattered around. Yeah. The, what, the do you, what would you call zones? those? Is that what you call them? It's called the, yeah, it's, it's called the landing or zone. Or like over here, this little room mm, over this here. This little room. Yeah, so that is just called a, like a, a listing. It's just a listing room. So this is actually based on an actual listing in Tokyo. Um, so the team who worked on that room kind of studied the listing. They designed it based off of that listing exactly. So and you then, have a team choose a listing that they like and then recreate it here exactly. in the headquarters? Yeah, exactly. And, and so how many listings do you have in this headquarters? Oh, my gosh. That's a really great question. They're pro- it's probably probably about five per floor. So and probably, three floors? Probably ten. Okay. Three floors. We, we just... Um, are going to uh, build out the fourth floor as well. Uh-huh. So I just read that. Yeah, congratulations! Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to be working on that. So all told, once once we have completed sort of construction on this zone, there should be twenty twenty five to- like really cool, unique sort of workspaces. It is very cool, and yeah. the restrooms also are themed, aren't it's they? It's true. That is very you true. You have an old phonograph in, one, in the ladies' room downstairs, oh, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yes. Very... That is like the punk rock room. Oh. <laughs> yeah. With the, yes, with the turntable and, and all of that stuff. Up here also there's a, a themed ladies' room that is the diva den. Okay. <laughs> so there's nail polish and there's everything's like bejeweled. It's very funny. Oh, how cool. <laughs> Feathers and jewels. Exactly. So my... Um, 
uh, my daughter and mm -hmm. others in the community talk about how jealous they are that they have friends who work in Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And mainly what they love is not, not only just this amazing workplace, but the food. Mm. So would you like to tell us about the food? <laughs> yeah, sure. I know. I wish I could invite everybody for lunch more often. Um, really, in Portland, at least, I mean, they do wonderful food in, in San Francisco, of course, as well. Um, but our food team in Portland is, I just feel like they're a step above. They're really, really focused on um, essentially having our food program be a real catalyst for uh, small farm support. Mm -hmm. So they work extremely, extremely hard to source vegetables, meat, everything, source it ethically from local sources. That's wonderful. It's really, really cool. Um, and they, they care a lot about that. Um, and that, that kind of comes first. I mean, they want to provide really healthy food so that people can be healthy, stay focused at work, you know, adhere to any diet concerns. There's always vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free options. And that's, of course, a huge concern of theirs. But they also really kind of want to revolutionize um, food service, mm -hmm. corporate food service even, and just look at it more as a way to, to really inject, um, you know, money and, and resources back into like the Portland community yeah. and build up those Great. small places. Great. So we, we do work a lot with um, one cooperative called Our Table. They're down in Sherwood, actually, and that's where our family dinner is going to be. Mm -hmm. Small farm cooperative, you know, really focused on the community. And so we've been a big part because we buy, you know, large quantities of vegetables. Um, we've, we've really helped to kind of bolster them and support them as they're getting their feet well, under them. And you have a restaurant here, mm -hmm. and you also have like a lunchroom mm -hmm. as well that you, mm -hmm. it, and is that where the food goes to the, both of those places? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, well, so as we've been talking about this, I'm wondering if there are any, as an employee of Airbnb, as an employee anywhere, everything mm -hmm. is not all, um, fun and games or, you mm -hmm. know, roses as they say. Yeah. And so do you want to comment on anything that, might have been a little difficult for you in your job or not? Yeah. I mean, it's certainly not something that you you need to do. I'm, I mean, it, just one just thing I... There's some balance Yeah. To I mean, one thing I will comment on is it's it's hard because the company has grown so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, that is one thing I think that everybody kind of feels the effects of. Um, you... It's, it's just the service has become so popular. And so you, you're always kind of a little bit plain catch up. Yeah. Which is hard when you you really want people to have great experiences. You really want them to to sort of get it about the community that we're trying to create. And it's hard when, you know, day after day you're seeing people really upset or just really frustrated because things aren't working right. Mm -hmm. And in your heart you're like you know, we're doing, we're really doing the best we can, mm -hmm. holding the train together as it's hurtling forward. But you also feel bummed that sometimes mm -hmm. you can't be perfect. So that, that I think is a stress that everybody here kind of feels like. We all believe, you know, in the mission and obviously millions of people do as well. Yeah. But it's just hard when you are growing so quickly. So... I want to backtrack with mm -hmm. another question that I wanted to ask you earlier mm -hmm. that I missed, and that as a single person living here in Portland, you have no vehicle. How are you getting around? How is this working for you to not have a car? Oh, for me? Yeah. I know well, you've got a bike, but... <laughs> well, my fiancé has a car. Okay. <laughs> but I um, I don't really drive to work. I just bike to work. Uh -huh. um, so we How live, far away are you? We just live up in Northwest. Okay. So I'm pretty close. I've always hated car commuting. I just really hate it. I mm -hmm. get very, very stressed. Mm -hmm. So I've always biked, always biked to work. So when you look for a place to live, you look for a place where you can be on your bike. I do. I would rather pay more in rent to live in a proximity, in a biking proximity to work than I would to pay less and live mm -hmm. further and have to drive mm -hmm. just because it makes me so angry <laughs> Honestly, I can't um, see you being angry. I know, but okay. <laughs> but to drive in traffic, 
when you, when you've bike commuted for your entire uh-oh. life, uh-oh. getting like getting in a car and getting in in rush hour traffic is it's pretty oh. crazy. Yes, um, I could see how Rogue River was good for you. Right, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we do own a car, but both of us are pretty focused on bike commuting, so we mostly. So he bike. buys. He buys. What is your fiance's name? He does. His name's Patrick. And Patrick. He, okay. Yeah, he's in he's in med school at OHSU, so he oh. he can bike there as well. That's quite a hill to bike up too. If he... It is a hill. <laughs> that's why there's the tram. <laughs> oh, that's right. My daughter takes that tram too. Yeah. Oh goodness. Um, well, I think we've covered just about everything that I have on my list. Oh, is there cool. anything that you want people to know about you or about Airbnb? I guess, you know, I still continually meet meet new hosts. I'll mention the office, and um, there's still a lot of them that, that don't even realize that there is an office in Portland. So I guess I would just say we, we, we do really want to be accessible, and I want to create events that people find value in and find interesting. So I can't really give out my email. No. But if people, yeah. uh, you know, are interested in hosting an event or have an idea for an event um they should definitely reach out they can reach out to you you can contact me mm-hmm. i'm i'm really excited to do that and kind of do what people want and then another thing uh, i guess that i've heard from a host before and he was he was a newer host and he was kind of like yeah i i didn't understand what my relationship with airbnb was he's like i didn't know if you guys were my employer or if we were business partners. And he's he kind of had this feeling that he didn't know how to interact with the company. And so I guess I would just want to say that we really want to be more approachable than that. Um, you know, we're not an employer. We're not like a boss of anybody. We're just a platform mm-hmm. um, that really wants to enable folks to do whatever their heart desires with their property or their listing. And so I guess just to try to demystify a little bit how people feel about the company. Right. We're just a bunch of, like, normal people. One of the things that, that has uh, come up for me in a number of different places, different Facebook pages and mm-hmm. on the community center, the Airbnb uh, platform, mm-hmm. is frustration in not being able to connect with Airbnb. Mm -hmm. They can't find a phone number. They can't Mm -hmm. find an email address. Mm -hmm. So if if we give them a phone number, an Mm -hmm. Airbnb phone number, Mm -hmm. um, and encourage them to make a phone call when they get when they have a question or they get frustrated or upset about something, Mm -hmm. that would be appropriate? Definitely. So so I mean can you can you go ahead So and and I've done this myself too because if I've been on a on a trip or something and I had a question um, because I still have to email in or call in or Mm -hmm. whatever Um, and it it is hard to find the the phone number on the website Mm -hmm. Um, you kind of have to select what your issue is you're gonna they're gonna ask you sort of some questions yes and then they're either gonna ask you to email or give you the number right and the reason for that is that they the system wants to answer the phone calls for people that are like really in a bind. You know what I mean? They don't want to get overwhelmed with phone exactly. calls. Exactly. So that's kind of the reason for that. Okay. But that said, um, the phone number is always listed. It's it's printed out on every single travel itinerary. So if you have a booking, if you Go to the booking, and you can see it right it's there? It's right there on the I receipt. I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's always there. It says, if anything comes up, call this number. So it's not like the number is a secret. Uh-huh. Um, it's definitely there. If you've ever taken a trip on Airbnb, you can just go to your past trips and see it. So 100% fine to share the number out. Okay. And I would just say, you know, during, like, summer, lots of people taking trips, lots of people reaching out to Airbnb. Mm-hmm. But it's always encouraged to to call. So there might be a wait. And I know exactly. that there is a separate Superhost number, mm-hmm. which I don't know that one. But mm-hmm. the regular customer service number, I do know. Yeah. Which is... Do you know it by heart? <laughs> area code 415... There you go. 8800. So it's 415-800-5959. Five, nine, five, nine. 
Nice. See, you're more on top of it than I am. I don't know the 800 number. So the 800 number should be 855 424 7262. 855 424 7262. Okay. And um, just as a funny side note, I was, I think I was on a trip. What was it that I needed to do? There, there was some reason that I needed to call in. Um, and I, I was kind of having the same problem. I couldn't find the number. The website wasn't giving me the number. Um, and That's I actually just cute. Googled it. <laughs> yes, I've been told that. Actually, That I, does work. <laughs> I did call. Was it? I can't, I can't remember who it was. But I think I was talking with someone. Uh-huh. I was talking with someone on Airbnb. I called customer service for okay. one reason or another. Mm-hmm. And I said, I cannot get this number to my guest because... The guest, because it gets scrubbed every time I put right. it in the email. Mm-hmm. So she said, tell your guest to look it up, to Google it, and it'll come right up. Well, yeah, and it did it perfectly. <laughs> so that's funny. Exactly. <laughs> funny. So just use your brain a little bit. <laughs> you can find it. Yeah. You can find it. People get frustrated. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. It's, it's, it's frustrating when you're like, ah, I need to do something yeah. now, and you like can't get it. Um, but, yeah. People can definitely call anytime. That's great. Yeah. Well, Taylor, thank you very much. Yeah, thank and you, Deb. if people want to want to get in touch with you, they can do that through me. And that would be that best. Would be, okay. And I don't think I can totally hand out my no. email. That, but that said, I, I just like to be accessible. Yeah. And um, folks do email me. I'm active on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll look on there and see what people have to say as mm-hmm. well. And then it'd be great to have feedback if people do enjoy events being posted there yes. or not. Um. So that would be for our local our local hosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, this podcast will be listened to by people all over the world. Okay. So if they want to get in touch with you, the best thing to do would be to send me a note, Debbie at hostingyourhome.com. Mm-hmm. And yep. then I can forward that on to you. Definitely. That's, okay. that's totally fine. That's what we'll do then. Yeah. Great. Cool. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for chatting. You're so sweet. <laughs> this was fun. Yeah. I hope I did okay. You did wonderfully. <laughs> you did great. That was awesome. Okay. Good. Like, never know. It's like being on radio where you have you. Ever, so in college, I I was like a DJ. Yeah. For the our oh, the college you? radio yeah. thing, yeah. and it was always so weird because you'd get in there, and then there's like the microphone, but you're alone. You're like I'm talking to myself. But I know there's people listening. Yeah. It's a weird feeling. Yeah, it is a weird feeling. And <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Just this last week, Taylor organized a family dinner sponsored by Airbnb, which took place in a field at a place called Our Table Cooperative. It's a farm located in the general Portland area. And there were about 125 hosts who participated in this feast. And that was just really, truly from farm to table, with the food grown and prepared right on the site. The food was amazingly delicious, and network and friend-making was enthusiastic and great fun. I met some new people there that I, I was just really drawn to, and I look forward to talking with them again. The day was perfect. It was warm and sunny. We got a tour of the farm, and then the evening was, was just starlit and clear and just beautiful. So it was a flawless production. Good job, Taylor. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you'd like to contact Taylor Shestrom, you can do that through me at my email address, debbie at hostingyourhome.com. The Airbnb customer service number just once again is area code 415-800-5959. And as always, we would love to have your comments and reviews, your topic suggestions, and your interview recommendations. You can find us at our website, of course, at hostingyourhome.com. You could review us in iTunes, which would be awesome because I don't think we've got any reviews there yet. I don't know how easy it is to leave a review in iTunes. So if you do that, I would really appreciate it. So anyway, you can find us at Google Play and in Stitcher and We have a Facebook page where the podcasts are uploaded called Hosting Your Home, of course. But we also have a closed Facebook group where conversations are taking place. So we'd love to have you join the group. To find the group itself, you would just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash hosting your home. 
Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll talk with you next week. Take care.